Hi y'all, so I thought it would be pretty appropriate on Halloween to come visit Alfred Packer, the Colorado cannibal. Um, he's actually very widely known here in Colorado and even in pop culture. So uh, the South Park guys even did a musical based on him. So we're here at the Littleton Cemetery in Colorado and we're gonna go visit his grave and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about his story. So, Alfred Packer was originally born in Pennsylvania. He enlisted in the Union Army during the Civil War and was honorably discharged almost immediately due to epilepsy. Um, he suffered from seizures every few days. Afterwards, he traveled west doing numerous odd jobs and ended up near Salt Lake City, Utah as a self-proclaimed professional wilderness guide and prospector. In November 1873, he was hired to guide 20 men from Provo, Utah to the San Juan Mountains in Colorado, where there is a silver boom happening. In the harsh winter and heavy snow, they get lost and end up walking for nearly three months and eventually have to get rescued in January of 1874 near Montrose, Colorado. They are stuck in snow, out of food, and very mad at Packer for getting them lost. Chief R.A. rescues them, and the, maze, the men stay with him for a few weeks for food and lodging. Five men and Packer decide to continue on, and they leave despite the chief's warnings. In the worst winter on record in Colorado, the men get lost again and run out of food immediately. April 1874, Packer emerges from the woods alone. Four months later in August, the bodies of the other five men are discovered near Lake City, Colorado by a newspaper reporter. Packer disappears and he hides out for eight years, never helping to locate the other five men. He gets discovered and captured in March of 1883, out in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He had been living under an alias name. There's a trial held in 1883, and Packer makes a number of different confessions over the period of his innocence, and always proclaims it's out of self-defense. So his first confession, when he comes out of the woods alone, Packer states, that he froze his feet and was left behind. And he had no idea where his other companions were. After his capture in 1883, he says that Israel Swan, one of the other men, froze first and then was eaten, then they walked a bit, and then Humphreys dies, and then they eat him, and they continue on and so forth until all the other men die. During his trial in 1883, Packer says that Bell, one of the other men, killed everyone while Packer was away. And then Packer said he killed Bell in self-defense. And then Packer ate everyone out of desperation. In prison in 1890, he says Bell kid killed everyone, tried to eat, and couldn't, and he lived on rose bushes for six weeks. So his first trial in 1883, he was actually found guilty of murder and sentenced to death by hanging. But the verdict gets thrown out due to being on Indian territory at the time and there being no laws against capital murder. So there's a second trial in 1886. He gets retried for manslaughter. It gets the harshest sentence for manslaughter to this day in Colorado history, which was 40 years in Canyon City Prison. And Cannon City Prison is no picnic. Then in 1901, after serving 18 years out of his 40 year sentence, Packer gets early parole. And this is after all these years in prison, he actually filed five appeal claims and they all got denied. And he was believed he could, he should have been pardoned the entire time. And after he gets out of prison, he becomes a guard for the Denver Post. Then in 1907, he dies from a stroke, and it's rumored 
that he was a vegetarian before his death and very well liked by children. And his last words are, I am not guilty of the charge. In 1989, 115 years later, an exhumation of the five bodies was done in Lake City, Colorado, where they are still buried today. Unfortunately, you can't visit the site right now because it's on private property and there was a lot of vandalism, and so they closed it off. But during the exhumation of skeletal remains, it showed signs of blunt force trauma to the skulls from a hatchet and multiple cut marks from butchering. It was suggested the men were sleeping at the time of their attack. So Packer's case is still really relevant today as there's many cases for the necessity defense or when is it okay to kill. In a survival or desperate situation, should you be allowed to do whatever you need to do in order to survive? Please let me know in the comments below if you think Packer is a monster or just guilty for wanting to live. So we're coming up to Alfred Packard's grave right now. As you can see, they actually spelled the, on the grave Alfred, um, but it was actually Alfred, but he went by both. So Packard did have a full military burial. His original grave marker was stolen. And the Littleton Cemetery Association cemented over his grave in 1973 to deter grave robbing and vandalism. So you'll see there's a cement slab over him now. And you can see many people leave little coins and trinkets for him still. And this is mostly due for, um, you know, respect for his military service. And actually there's still a lot of people too that believed, you know, he should have been pardoned and shouldn't have been treated like a criminal for that survival situation. And they even have a nice placard for him here, kind of describing the story I told you guys a little bit. Um, there's a whole chapter dedicated to him, the Alpaca chapter number 100. And you'll see they even recently have put up this bench here in front of his grave to sit on. So, I noticed on his tombstone there is quite a lot of chipping on the edge there. So, it looks like people still try to take souvenirs of him. So, there is Alfred Packer and he's still heavily visited here in Colorado. Hope you guys liked that video and enjoyed learning a little bit about Alfred Packer, the Colorado cannibal. So please like and subscribe for some more videos. Thanks.